Welcome to Conference and Events 25 Live Tutorial. My name is Mackenzie Linus and I am the uh, Event Services Manager here at Pacific Lutheran University. So 25 Live is a way to schedule events within our campus. So I'm going to show you uh, our system that we use to allow anybody to book any room. So if you go into the calendar right here, uh, first you go to plu.edu and then you click on the calendar. It's between news and maps up in this um, left hand corner. And then here's our campus calendar that shows all the events that are happening on campus. And you want to go to schedule my dot 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 to um, schedule your event. And it will bring you to 25 Live, which is our campus scheduler here at Pacific Lutheran University. The first thing you need to do when you come to 25 Live is you must sign in. A lot of people forget to sign in and then um, 25 Live does not work. So up in the upper right hand corner or the lower left hand corner, you'll see two sign in locations. Just click on that and sign in. Oops. All right, once you sign in, um, the first thing you're going to do that will look very appealing is find available locations. I know when my event should take place. Help me find a location. We advise uh, clients not to use this interface because it can get very confusing and it doesn't show you a wide range of what's happening on campus. Um, I recommend going to the Locations tab, which is in between the Events and Resources tab. Um, it's blue. So just click on that. A lot of events, event planners know about where they like their uh, events to take place, whether that's in the University Center or in Admin or Morkin or Classroom or a conference room or something like that. So as long as you have an idea of what location you would like, uh, this is the perfect tab to use. Um, most people would like their event in the University Center, so you just type in UC. Simple as that. And it's going to load all the rooms within the University Center. Um, you can see right here there's three tabs, List, Availability, and Calendar. Make sure you're on Availability because you would like to know what is available within the University Center. So it's going to load all the events that are happening in the University Center. What's really nice about this is it allows you to see what other things are happening on the day you'd like to schedule your event. Such as, if you're trying to schedule a big lecture or a writing, writer series, you probably don't want to schedule it on the same day that something else would conflict with it, such as two competing endowed lectures. Um, so this is a really nice view to be able to see what's on campus, such as you know that the Academic Dean's Council is happening between 1 and 4 today. Um, so I know that um, I need my event on the 25th, so I'm going to go to the 25th right here on the dates, and I'm just going to click the 25th. Uh, it helps to have a few locations or a few dates in mind to help you find your location. Um, because not all the time, not always will an event be available, or not, not always will your room be available on the date you like it. So always have a couple of options out there. All right, now my event is going to be a conference and events open house. Um, so I know that I need a bigger room than a small meeting room. And I know I need, um, and I know it needs to be not as big as a CK, but a little bit moderate. So the best room I would think would be either the Regency or the SEC. Now, if I'm not really sure which one to do, I can see what the room looks like because sometimes you just don't know what you're looking at. So I'm going to click on the Regency and go to Details, and it shows me how big the room is. So we have a nice picture here that will allow you to see. Um, it also lets you know what's in the room, such as uh, projector screen, speakers, laptop connection, uh, DVD player, computer projector, the works. So I know that this room will be helpful for me. So I'm just going to hit the back button, and it is available all day. Um, so I would like my event midday, let's just say from 1 to 2. All I have to do is click into the box that I would like, and it brings me to our event wizard or the place we need to book. And um, from here, all you have to do is fill out the available fields, such as event name, con conference and events open house. Uh, event subtitle is when if you need more information, such as um, the Benson Lecture, 
and then the subtitle will be what the events and lecture is talking about. The event description is very, very important because you um, this will not only tell conference and events what your event is, but it also can post to the um, campus calendar to show you show people or entice people to come to your event. So if I go to www.plu.edu and type in the calendar, that description pulls right here. Um, so you can see, so other people can see what your event is about. Um, so I'm just going to type in open house for event planners to learn about 25 Live. Uh, make sure everything is spelled right because this is what people are going to see. All right, the next thing you could do is event type. I'm going to select all event types so I can see the difference. So you see we have a couple options. Admissions, arts, athletics, conference or camp, faith-based, important date, lecture, maintenance, meeting, special event, student event. Um, the best thing I can recommend is just uh, picking the category that yours fits into the most. Mine would be special event. And you can always start your, look, start your event types right here so that you don't always have to look for the list. You can just pull it up right here, and you can see I have special event that's under my start. The next would be the primary organization. Um, who is putting on this event, such as the conference and events open house? It would be conference and events or auxiliary services. So I'm going to go into index, and I'm going to go A through D because conference and events. And I'm going to scroll down and find conference and events. Now this list may look very, very overwhelming, but you can also use the start function so that you don't always have to scroll through because you'll probably be booking the events for the same organization. Conference and events right there. Now I'm going to start up in this right hand corner and then it will always pull through all my start organizations right here so I don't have to always look through the list. Additional organizations for this event would be that um, conference and events and auxiliary services are putting is putting on this event. So I'm going to find auxiliary services. Oop, too far. Mm -hmm. Right there. So now both these are going to be listed as the requester of this event. The requester will obviously be you, so your name should be right here. I am on our test account, so I am Reggie today. And then we just have to hit next. Now, because we clicked in on the 25th, it already has our day assigned. So uh, my event is from 1 to 2. I really want it to go till 3, so I'm just going to change it till 3. Um, and now it tells me my event is 2 hours. Now, also, I know that I'm going to have to be in my room 30 minutes prior to setup. So I'm going to go into pre-event slash setup, and I'm going to do a 30-minute pre-event time to allow me to access my room early, as well as it'll post the right time to the campus scheduler. So this is really important that you put in the start and end date the right time. And I know it's going to take me 30 minutes to take down the event. This helps conference and events be able to set up your event knowing that you would like to access your room at 1230, so we'll make sure all your room is, your whole room is set before then. And because we changed the first hour time, you just want to check for location and resource conflicts. And we have the green light right here that there is a check mark. Um, <clears throat> event locations, you see that Regency is still there and it tells you all the features within the um, locations. A lot of people do setup instructions right here, but 25 Live has a bug where it drops your setup instructions before it gets to conference and events, so we ask that you put your setup instructions down below. Um, event headcount is, is really important um, to allow conference and events to understand what's happening in your event, such as if you say you're having uh, an event for 30 people and you book a room that only holds 10, we will contact you and let you know that this won't be the best fit. So we um, make sure to pay attention to that. So I'm hoping that my expected headcount will be 50 at my event um, to allow for um, <clears throat> understanding. So the next thing that we need to do is do, um, the next thing I want to do is I want to publish it to the campus calendar. Um, in order to do that, uh, I, all I have to do is click publish to calendar Yes. 
This will have it pull to this main calendar so that people can see that I am having a conference and events open house on the 25th. <clears throat> The next thing you want to do is if you have a departmental calendar, you can also publish this event onto that as well, such as the conference and events has a calendar. So not only will it pull to the campus calendar, it'll also pull to the conference and events calendar on our web page. And finally, event comments. Event comments are really important because it allows you to request any services you need from either multimedia, conference and events, catering, stage services, campus safety, um, cleaning services, and sustainability support. So you're able to request everything in this event's comments, such as I would like my setup to be, to be rounds for 50, because I know 50 people are coming to my event. This is also where I can request to have catering. Um, so catering, uh, you don't have to have your menu quite yet, but if you request catering through us, catering will contact you directly to uh, inquire about your menu. You can also request to have a podium microphone, as well as a technician to be there to ensure that everything is working properly. You can also request to have sandwich boards or any of conference and events materials delivered to your room. So anything you need for your event, just put into the event comments and conference and events will be able to help you out. Um, we're striving to be a one-stop shop. So we will order your catering, we will order your media, and we will ensure that your rounds are set up and that we will do a pre-event check before your event to ensure that all these services are there for you. And then all you have to do is hit finish. It's going to make sure that everything's working and you won't get this menu and you just you hit I don't know and save and it's saving your event and it's sending your request to conference and events. We recommend that you write down your reference number so that you can help conference and events be able to find your event easier as well as if you add it to your starred locations it will pull up on your main screen. So you're done. Hit close, go back to your home screen and your start events right here, hit refresh, and you'll see conference and events right open house right there. You just have to click in it, and it will show you exactly what you ordered. So hopefully that this helps you. If you have any questions, just call conference and events at 253-535-7450.